In 2291, in an attempt to control violence among deep space miners, the new Earth government legalized no holds barred fighting. The Andrew Mining Corporation, working with the NEG, established a series of leagues and bloody public exhibitions. The fight's popularity grew with their brutality. Soon, Leandri discovered that the public matches were their most profitable enterprise. The Professional League was formed. A cabal of the most violent and skilled warriors in known space selected to fight in a grand tournament. Now it is 2341. Fifty years have passed since the founding of Deathmatch. Profits from the tournament number in the hundreds of billions. You have been selected to fight in the Professional League by the Leandro Rules Board. Your strength and brutality are legendary. The time has come to prove you are the best. To crush your enemies. To win the tournament. Welcome to Deathmatch Combat Training. Deathmatch is a sport in which you compete against other gun-wielding players in a fast-paced free-for-all. The object is to destroy all of your enemies by any means necessary. Every time you take an enemy out, you get a point called a frag in gaming lingo. You can see your frag count on the left side of the screen. At the end of the game, the player with the most frags wins the match. Remember, if you accidentally blow yourself up, fall into lava, you will lose a frag. Let's learn some basics about moving around. A good deathmatch player is always moving because a moving target is harder to hit than a stationary one. The forward key moves you forward, while the backward key makes you backpedal. The left key causes you to strafe left, while the right key, you guessed it, strafes right. Strafing is also extremely important in deathmatch because it allows you to move from side to side without turning and losing sight or aim of your foe. Let's try strafing left and right now. Another important element of moving around is jumping. Jumping allows you to reach areas of the map that are too high to walk to normally and to cross dangerous pits. Try pressing the jump button and jump around the map. Excellent! Now we're going to learn about mouse looking. Move your mouse around and notice how you do shift. This is how you look around and turn, known as mouse look. And try turning around several times by moving the mouse left to right to see the lovely battle room. Excellent! You can also look vertically to see what's occurring above and below you. In deathmatch, your enemies will be attacking from above and below, so remember to always keep your eyes open. If you feel like you're looking around too quickly, you can easily adjust the sensitivity of the mouse in the options menu. Let's learn about options. Remember, the only way to win a deathmatch is to destroy your foes with weaponry that you collect. I'm going to open the weapons locker and allow access to some guns. Let's pick them up and get ready for some target practice. Great, now we're armed. The gun you're carrying is commonly called the shock rifle. It, like all other weapons in the tournament, has two firing modes. Let's try shooting the gun now. Press the fire button to emit a lethal electric beam. The shock rifle's primary fire will instantly hit the person you shoot at. Behind the tournament, every weapon also has an alternate firing mode. Press the Alt Fire button to shoot a ball of plasma at your enemy. which attack is right for the situation. Sometimes you might be carrying more than one weapon. I've just put an enforcer sidearm in your pack. Each weapon has an associated number that you can see at the bottom of your screen. The enforcer is weapon number two. Press two and switch to the enforcer. And switch back to the Good, now you know how to switch weapons in battle. Every weapon in Unreal Tournament is a projectile weapon except one, the impact hammer. Press 1 now to switch to the impact hammer. The impact hammer is a melee or close combat weapon. 
It requires you to be standing very close to the target to do damage. The trade-off is that a hit will almost always kill your enemy. Press and hold the primary fire button now to charge up the impact hammer. Now run up to Nali I just spawned. When you get close enough, the impact hammer will release, blowing him into pieces. Stationary targets. Shoot all three barrels. Nice shooting, Tex. It's about to get harder. I'm going to release a training human opponent for you to practice on. You'll have to frag him three times to complete the tutorial. Good luck!
pressurization commencing.
Double kill!
killing spring. Congratulations, you are the winner.
you're the winner.
Welcome to Domination Combat Training. This tutorial will instruct you on the basic gameplay rules of Domination. Tutorials on Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and Assault are also available. Let's start by learning about the elements Domination adds to the Heads Up Display, or HUD. Domination enhances the basic team play HUD by adding control point status indicators to the left side of your screen. There are two control points on this tutorial map. We'll discuss the function of control points shortly. Each indicator shows the name of a control point and that control point's current status. Every control point in a domination map has a unique name. These control points are named Alpha and Gamma. The icon next to the control point name displays the status of that location. Before I explain how these icons work, let's discuss the rules of domination. In domination, each team is trying to control and hold the level's control points. The team is given one point every five seconds for each location they control. This is a control point. The grey X symbol indicates that no team is in control of this location. To take control of a location, touch it. Do this now. Good. Now your team controls this location. Notice that the shape and color of the control point has changed to reflect your team symbol and color. Look at the control point status icon. Notice that the gamma point icon has changed to indicate your team is in control. You can use these icons to quickly assess the state of a domination game. Now find and control the alpha point to secure your domination of this map. You control all of the points on this map. In summary, each team must locate and capture certain points in the domination map. The more locations a team controls, the faster their score increases. This device is called a translocator. You can use
exit the module is now on the floor. If you hit the alt fire button, you will be teleported to the module. Run away from the module and hit the alt fire button. Good, now you're back at the module. You can fire the module out, switch to a weapon, and switch back to the translocator to activate it any time you want to. If you see an enemy translocator module on the ground, you can shoot it to disrupt it. Translocating to a disrupted module causes instant death. It's time for a test. I'm going to spawn two bots on the enemy team and one bot to assist you. The first team to gain 20 points wins. Good luck! First blood! Search and destroy! On my way. Red leader.
Congratulations, you are the winner!
Search and destroy. Roger, Roger. Red, red leader. <laughs> Die.
eliminated. I'm Control point is secure. I'm hit.
Red search and destroy. Got it. Red Roger that. Red I need sucker. I'm in! I'm in! <laughs>
a bigger gun. You be dead. Control 
Welcome to Capture the Flag Combat Training. This tutorial will instruct you on the basic rules of Capture the Flag. Tutorials on Deathmatch, Domination, and Assault are also available. Let's start by learning about the Heads Up display for the HUD. CTF adds a few new elements to the HUD you should be aware of. Your HUD color indicates your team affiliation. Your HUD is red, indicating you are on the red team would indicate that you were on the blue team. The two flag icons indicate the status of the red and blue flags. This allows you to obtain a quick overview of battlefield conditions. We'll discuss the meaning of each flag status icon in a bit. Just to the left of each flag status icon is that team's score. Now let's look at the element CTF adds to the scoreboard. Capture the Flag uses the standard Unreal Team Play scoreboard configuration. The left column lists the red team players and scores, and the right column lists the blue team players and scores. Notice your name and current score of zero listed to the left. Above your name is the name of your team. Your team's current score is listed to the right of the team's name. When a player in CTF is carrying the flag, a small jock will appear next to the 
name in the scoreboard. This can be used to quickly determine which teammate to protect or which enemy to hunt down. Now it's time to learn the rules of Capture the Flag. In Capture the Flag, you can use the translator. It works the same way as in Domination, with one mind or two. You are not allowed to translocate and carry the flag at the same time. If you translocate while holding the enemy flag, he will successfully translocate, but the flag will be dropped from the ground. This prevents you from translocating all the way back to your base after you have captured the enemy's flag. Each CTF map has a red and blue base. This is red base. The blue base is just down the hallway. Each base contains a flag. In front of you is the red flag. The object of CTF is to capture the enemy team's flag while defending your own. Let's give it a try. Run to the blue base and touch their flag to pick it up. Grab any equipment you find along the way. Great, now you have the enemy flag. The flashing yellow message is to remind you that once you have the flag, you need to return it to your base to score. Notice the blue team flag status icon changed. Now it indicates that a red team player is in possession of the flag. Blue team is in trouble. Great job. You captured the enemy flag and scored a point for your team. It wasn't so hard now, was it? It's about to get harder. In a few seconds, I'm going to spawn two blue team bots and a red teammate you can practice with. There's one last status icon to tell you about. If a player drops the flag while carrying it, his team's flag status icon will change to a flag icon containing a downward arrow. If you find your flag lying on the ground after you kill an enemy who is carrying it, touch it to automatically return it to your base. This concludes CTF tutorial. Let me spawn those practice bots for you. Good hunting!
Congratulations, you are the winner!
Congratulations, you are the winner.
winner.
Your target eliminated. Yeah. <laughs>
welcome to Assault Combat Trainer. This tutorial will instruct you on the basic rules of assault. Tutorials on deathmatch, domination, and capture the flag are also available. The first thing you'll notice upon entering the assault game is the large digital time display to the left of your HUD. This timer counts away the seconds until the game ends. Time is critical in an assault game. The game consists of two teams, each of a unique goal. You are on the attacking team. Your job is to penetrate the enemy base and destroy several key locations. If you fail to take the enemy base within the allotted time, you lose. The opposing team are the defenders. The defender's job is to protect their base and key locations from the assaulting team. If you succeed in taking the enemy base as an attacker, then you must play the role of the defender for the same length of time. To clarify, if you have 20 minutes to take the enemy base and you succeed in 10, then the map will restart and you must defend the base for 10 minutes. The longer it takes you to succeed in attacking, the longer you must defend the base from the enemy. Each assault map is unique in design. It may take time to learn the layout and develop strategies to attack and defend successfully. At the start of every match, you are in spectator mode. You are free to fly around and explore the map before playing games to familiarize yourself with the environment. When playing assault with bots, you can use the orders menu to command bot behavior. By hitting the V key, you can access the orders menu and deploy bots as you see fit. The goal of this tutorial map is to break into the enemy base and destroy a prototype plasma tank. I'm going to summon two enemy bots to try to stop you, but you'll have a buddy to assist. Some explosives have been set on the cave wall near the enemy base. Use your weapon to light the fuse and get back. Use the breach the explosive creates to enter the enemy base and take up the tank. Watch out for the enemy bot guarding the base and plasma turrets. Good luck! Command leader, you got point! Hold the base!
leader. Soldier, I've got your back. Roger that. Roger. Red leader. Red leader.
Down. 
winner.